Good afternoon everyone. Curriculum workers follows a certain model that are flexible enough to be corrected once a failure within the implementation period of course. Due to this matter, some delays in the curriculum development becomes inevitable. So why I am saying this? Once again, good afternoon. My name is Pia A. Picasso and I will be discussing the dynamic model of curriculum development. But before we proceed to the discussion, let me discuss first what is a dynamic model of curriculum development. The first term that we have is the dynamic. Dynamic process refers to a change for a better means, any alteration, modification, or improvement of the existing conditions to produce positive changes. Second term that we have is the model. Model refers to a system or thing used as an example to follow or imitate. Third, we have the curriculum. So what is curriculum? Curriculum is defined as a plan used in education that directs teacher instruction. Lastly, we have the development. Development and curriculum should be purposeful, planned, and progressive. In a nutshell, dynamic model of curriculum development is not considered as linear or sequence but semi-flexible. Now, let's proceed to the different models under the dynamic model of curriculum development. First, we have the Walker's model or also known as naturalistic model. This model is developed by Decker Walker, an assistant professor at the Stanford University. This model was first published in 1971. Tucker Walker is more interested on how curriculum workers do their task in developing a curriculum. In this model, it is stated that curriculum developers do not follow the prescriptive approach of the rational linear sequence of curriculum elements. Walker was able to identify the three phases which includes the platform, deliberation, and curriculum design. Now, let's discuss first what is in the platform phase. In platform phase, the curriculum workers share their respective beliefs, theories, conceptions, point of view, aims, and objectives. So, in this phase, the curriculum workers commonly present their ideas on how the curriculum should be implemented. This is also the phase where in the curriculum workers um, discuss who will be the target learners, provide theories that will support the implementation of the curriculum. Um, it will go to answer the question why the curriculum should be implemented. And in this phase also, they will be discussing the aims and they will go to have a vision of the purpose of the curriculum. Like for an instance in K-12 curriculum, its purpose is to prepare students to become competitive for the globalization. This is the deliberation phase wherein the curriculum workers identify which facts are needed for a means and end. It is a phase where debates and arguments takes place as they present or generate alternative while considering the possible consequences of it before making a decision. Like for an instance in CBSEA, curriculum workers are discussing and searching for an alternative name to change. Now let's proceed to the last phase, which is the curriculum design. In this phase, the decisions from the deliberation is being published, preparing it for actual implementation and development. This phase involves planning and decision making, like finalizing the set of subjects, school objectives, in vision, mission, goals, students' activities, programs, and design. So now let's proceed to the second model, which is the Skelbex Curriculum Development Model that was developed by an Australian educator named Malcolm Skelbeck. So in this model of Skelbeck, he pointed out that the curriculum workers can start from any phase because these phases are interrelated from one another. The Skelbex model has a phases such as the situational analysis, goal formulation, program building, interpretation and implementation, monitoring, feedback, assessment, and reconstruction. In situational analysis, the curriculum workers undergo a process of examining factors that happened in the environment through analysis and observation. For example, in the external aspect, 
of school which covers the culture, parents' expectation, and teacher support system, while internal includes the student abilities, teacher skills, and knowledge. So in situational analysis, the curriculum workers identifies the determinants of the curriculum, which includes the learners, the society, and the knowledge. The third phase is the program building where it comprises the selection of the subject matter of learning, sequencing of teacher in the learning episodes for the development of staff, and choice of supplementary materials. Next is the interpretation and implementation wherein practical problems are anticipated and resolved. Last phase is the monitoring, feedback, assessment, and reconstruction wherein the curriculum workers perceive the role of the teachers in evaluation phase to ensure reconstruction. So as what I have said a while ago, the curriculum workers has a freedom to choose where from these phases they will go to start. Like for an instance, they will want to start in the second phase which is the goal formulation. Therefore, they were going to identify first its determinants before proceeding to the situational analysis, wherein the situational analysis includes um, analysis and observation within the society or even the institution. Next is the program building, which comprises the selection of this subject. Next is the interpretation and implementation to be followed with the evaluation. Now we have the third model, which is the Isner's artistic approach proposed by Elliot W. Isner. He believed that there is a need to develop a new theory that recognizes the artistry of teaching that is useful in helping teachers develop those arts. Isner's artistic approach includes goals and priorities, content of curriculum, types of learning opportunities, organization of learning opportunities, organization of content areas, mode of presentation and model response, and lastly, the type of evaluation. In selecting and formulating the goals and objectives of the curriculum, Isner stressed an artful process of arriving at a consensus about curricular priorities by involving the participants. This engagement is similar with the Walker's idea of platform phase, wherein the curriculum workers share their ideas, beliefs, and the such. Same goes with Swap's idea of deliberation, wherein debates and arguments takes place. He also pointed out that the curriculum content should be organized and integrated in different ways by providing various kinds of strategies and methods to engage students in a meaningful learning. He said that evaluation is not the final step of curriculum development, but rather it is something that pervades the entire curriculum development process. Like for an example, in evaluation part, the curriculum workers found out that the one subject is not appropriate in a certain grade level. Therefore, they will go in to modify and improve the curriculum to address certain problems and needs that are essential in developing the curriculum. To put everything into a whole, the dynamic model of curriculum development has an advantage and disadvantage. First, the advantage is, since it is dynamic, the curriculum workers may change their previous decisions and correct some mistakes according to the model of print. However, the disadvantage or being dynamic, it can be confusing for some that didn't know the necessary process in curriculum development. This kind of disadvantage may occur in the skill-based model of curriculum development because the curriculum workers is not required to follow a systematic way of developing a curriculum. Another disadvantage is that curriculum development will be stuck in phase two according to print and walkers because the discussion may lead to analysis paralysis syndrome and can cause delay in curriculum progress. The next model is the Pauline's model for developing curriculum that will be discussed by the next reporter, Ms. Monique T. De La Cruz.